Thank you, Ms. Masters and fellow sponsors, this distinguished guest, PTM, the sponsor for Salman, and all of you around here, dear guests. Good evening. Good evening. Well, today, the person, the person, I won't, I won't say that a human being, a person, the whom I need to praise. Like, words are not enough for the person. His achievements, the goals that he did, are much more, stands much higher, more than my words. If the time, five minutes, are not enough for me. As my evaluator said, mention our his five achievements. He has many of them, and mention five of them, the time doesn't allow me. So I will at least mention one of his achievements. The person whom I'm going to talk about today, whom I'm going to praise, is none other than the companion of our Prophet, Abdullah ibn Hadid. When I'm going to talk about courage, faith, and willingness, we do mention about his name, Abdullah ibn Hadid. When he used to walk in the street, people used to come and kiss on his forehead as a sign of respect, as a sign of faith. The power which he was having, the willingness, the faith, and the iman was much more high. It can never be comprehended. I really used to think that why people used to kiss like the forehead of Abdullah like, today. Like why? Why do Arabs these days kiss the forehead? Like it's it's a, it is because of respect actually. I got to know about. But I wanted to do a little bit more research, and then I got to know it was actually because the battle with the Romans. When the Muslims had a war with the Romans, many of the Muslims were taken as prisoners, war prisoners. And at that time, a Sahaba, a companion of Prophet, was considered to be out of this world. They think, to, they think like the companion has some special power, has some special gene. So when the Roman king got to know about that they the Sahaba, and the, the, the prisoners and the war prisoners, he was really happy. He wanted that the Sahaba, the companion of Allah, should marry his daughter. He used to think that if they both marry, their children will become Superman. But it's actually impossible. He used to think like that. He used to think that Abdullah ibn Khalifa has something in them. So he ordered a few of his soldiers to bring Abdullah ibn Khalifa to him. And when he was brought, he said, Abdullah ibn Khalifa, I will give you half of my kingdom if you just marry my daughter, but on a condition. You have to change your religion. You have to change your religion. And Abdullah ibn Khalifa said, La, no, just one word, no. The king got really shocked, surprised. He was really agitated. He was like, I'm giving this guy half of my kingdom. And this guy is saying, no. Like, no. The king felt very angry. He was like, Abdullah, I will kill you if you don't marry my daughter. If you don't marry my daughter, I will kill you. Abdullah ibn Khalifa said, La, I won't marry your daughter. No, I will change my life. At that time, the king felt really shocked. He was surprised. It was the matter of his pride. Like, he's the king. And there's a captain. And he's saying, No. One word. The power of the king. The voice of the king has no value in front of the faith, the willingness of Abdullah This was the time the king thought of an idea. He sent his soldiers to bring the other captive Muslims and bring a pot of hot boiling oil. Imagine, ladies and gentlemen, pot of boiling oil, steam, and just threw the Muslim captive prison in the pot of oil. And you could see that the, the, the bones were sticking out of his body. The flesh, the flesh got fried. And it was all happening like right in front of the eyes of Abdullah ibn Khalid. The king said, Abdullah, what do you think now? And Abdullah said, La, no, I won't marry your daughter. No, I will change my religion. This was the time when the king got angry. And he said, take Abdullah bin Khalifa to the same form. As the soldiers were dragging him, Abdullah bin Khalifa started crying. The king saw this. He was like, now I have won. Now I have won. He said the soldiers to bring back Abdullah bin Khalifa and he asked him, Abdullah, is it because of your wife or is it because of your children 
or is it because of your land, or is it because of your precious life that you are kind? And Abdullah and Khalid said, Life, I am not a bit of bread. I just remember that I only have one soul left. I only have one soul left and it will be gone now. I wanted hundred souls like this to die the same death and Shabir is a martyr. The king was shocked. He was caught. He buffered. He was like, my pride is like, like I'm afraid of so much that this guy's faith is villainous. He's more stronger than me. Ladies and gentlemen, people, men like Abdullah the Hadid of history don't have him anymore. The king was first challenged and he was like, Abdullah. I will give you one last chance. He just wanted it. Abdullah, will you come and kiss my forehead? And I will let you go. Abdullah ibn Abdul Dhafa said, La, no. He said, I don't bother about myself. I want all of the Muslim army to be free when he kiss your forehead. And that's what happened. Because it was the man of the king's pride. He wanted to make Abdullah agree with him on somehow. And he did so. The Muslim army was free. Abdullah bin Abdul Khalifa came back. When the Khalifa of that time, the leader of the Muslim community of the Muslim nation, Umar bin Khattab, learned about this, he said, it is obligated on every Muslim to kiss the forehead of Abdullah bin Khalifa in the form of respect. And that's what happened. I didn't just praise this huge personality, this amazing personality, this amazing man, just, just like that. History don't produce none like this anymore. And our fate, our lyrics, when you compare these guys, is nothing. It can never be comprehended. Ladies and gentlemen, all I want us to shape our faith, our willingness, our Imam, our religion, to be like Abdullah and Khalid, or just be a little bit closer this, ladies and gentlemen, and also the